Want to go uh, to New Hampshire Governor Chris Sununu on all of this. Um, Governor, it's always great uh, to see you. I do want to talk about your decision not to run for re-election. You've been a very successful multi-term governor in New Hampshire, but your take right now on some of these polls that are coming out of your state for the presidential primary, uh, Donald Trump has lost a little ground, still leads by a big amount, but what do you think? Uh, well, when you have an incumbent president that's sitting under 40 percent, that's a huge opportunity, right, for everybody else. Now, it probably means we're going to have to coalesce one or two candidates around that other category. But that's 60 plus percent of the voters right now that are not with Trump here in New Hampshire. I think that number will even will grow even more and more. Is uh, a lot of that his poll numbers even at 37 percent? There's a lot of sympathy there for him, you know, because of the, the political attacks. And of course, you know, I agree with that. I think a lot of folks agree that there's a lot of politicalization coming out of the Department of Justice and the indictments, but just the reality that this can't be our candidate because it ain't going to win in November of 24. That reality is really coming to bear. I think you're, you know, the, the previous statements that were made are exactly right. All of these candidates have to start hitting this guy. Uh, you can't run but against not, somebody, be 20 not points governor, down, but not with be willing to talk about With the exception of Chris Christie, maybe yeah. Asa Hutchinson, they're really not. They're being very yeah. Yeah, ginger about it. We, it's a lot more out of Nikki Haley. Last time I chatted, her, she was pretty critical, but most are not, and, and you don't like that. Right. No, well, look, I mean, I think a lot of our hope is they got to get on the debate stage. Either right. you're willing to, to swing, you're willing to, to give the punch and take the punch and show leadership, or, or you're, you're kowtowing. I don't understand the, the, the politics of it because you're not going to get a Trump voter. I, right there with Trump. <laughs> so if the base is with Trump, the base is with Trump. He's still going to be in the race. So you got to find your own path. And, and I think Chris was right. You got to go through them. You can't go around them. They tried that in 16. They tried to avoid the controversy. Leadership takes it head on. Leadership says, I'm going to drive forward on this party. I'm going to be for a positive future. I'm going to be a candidate that brings more people together. That's exactly what the Republican Party is waiting to see. And he or she who does that is going to be able to galvanize a lot of folks around him. Probably not till November, December. Still a lot to play out but ultimately that is the path to get this nomination where yeah, you talk about they don't want to you know ruffle Trump voters I, I get that but um, by by not doing this uh, they're 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 probably turning off those voters too so uh, what do they risk going after Trump nothing Nothing. I, I, again, I don't know the political strategy here. Yeah. Um, they, they risk upsetting a voter that they're not going to get in the first place, right? Those voters will come back in the general election. That's fine, you know, after you get the nomination. But those base voters are with Trump. We know that. They're, hmm. they're in lockstep. That isn't, that isn't a question. They have to win the other 60%. And if they can do that, that, that's the ticket right there. And again, we've all, had, we've all had the discussion, but the hard conversations are going to happen November, December, when we tell this candidate, you're pulling at 3%, get the heck out. You tell this candidate's donors, call that candidate, tell them you're shutting them off financially, we have to galvanize. And I feel, still feel very confident that is going to happen. Pretty tough conversations, especially yeah. for someone like me, because they're all my friends and I want them all to do well, but they have to have the discipline of getting into a race is easy. The discipline of getting out, that's the, that's the real key. Well, you never got into this presidential race. A lot of people said that you should have. A lot of people are disappointed as well with your decision not to run for re-election as the governor of New Hampshire. I think Politico had said Republicans like Chris Sununu once overperformed in blue and purple states. I think they still meant to say that you do now even. Uh, now, he's leaving, they say, and there aren't many more left. He's referring, or they are referring, to these Republicans that appeal in not safe Republican areas. And, and that's dwindling. Uh, and it's an echo yeah, chamber look, we're, now. We're Do you worry about state. that? Um, look, it's New Hampshire. We are purple. We're not a Democrat state. We, we, I, I, our House and Senate is still led by Republicans. I'm a Republican governor. Our council is led by Republicans. So we're still a, a, a red state, but we're always one election away from becoming like Massachusetts. Sorry, Massachusetts. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, really, um, look, look. We're, we're taking. We have the fastest population growth, the fastest business growth, the most, the most uh, pro-business state in the Northeast. So we have all these great things going for us. I've been here four terms. I've been here going on eight years now. Um, I still have 18 months to go, to be sure. But I kind of wanted folks to know where I was. And it's public. It's not a public career. It's called public service. And I think folks have to have to kind of stay disciplined to that. I could win a fifth term. I mean, that's that's nice to know. But you got to kind of hopefully leave things better than you found it, give uh, somebody else an opportunity to run and run on the Republican successes that we've shown can really be gathered in New Hampshire. But that is rarely echoed by some of these other candidates. And something might change, Governor, to your point. Uh, but your name, it comes up in, as, as possibly a no-label type candidate to run as an independent. 
Would you ever consider that? No, nothing I'm looking at. Look, I, I'm, I'm still very, again, look at that poll. The fact that I have Donald Trump's now under 40 percent here in New Hampshire. Other candidates are getting in. They're spending their money. The debates are coming up. Huge opportunity for great Republicans to step but forward, not show that, that leadership, no, no, get no, this not nomination. Not just that poll, Governor. For, you know, close to half Americans are open to a, a moderate third-party candidate. And, and, and you are in that group of people that presumably could fit that bill. Are you interested? Well, look, there's... Uh, no, look, nothing I'm looking at. I, I can tell you there's a reason. When you look at Trump-Biden, yesterday's news on both sides, yeah. no one's excited by either of them. They both have legal troubles. They both are just, with all the drama, the baggage, it's everything the average American doesn't want right now. So I can see why a third party, uh, if, if structured right, if they can get ballot access with the right candidates, could be actually quite exciting. This isn't hmm. going to be like Ross Perot in 92 if all, the, if all the dominoes line up. But my focus right now is a strong Republican candidate because that's how you get the, the best Republican values back there. And hopefully it's someone that understands systems, that believes in limited government, that doesn't just believe you're going to have a, a big government solution to everything. we got to get out of that mindset. That is not what Republicans are really about. Uh, we got to get back to that local control. And as I like to say in New Hampshire, a little bit of that live free or die thing, right? That's, it's All about right. the individual. It ain't about government solutions. That sounds like a definite maybe. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Uh, and, Governor, it's great. Yeah, to see I, 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 look, I, you know, no, right. nothing we're looking at. Nothing we're looking Understood. at. But look, I, I, I would expect nothing less. You got to leave them hanging. I know you need to leave them hanging for a little more for, for your show. That's no. right. It's all drama. Uh, all, all drama. Governor, always great seeing you. Thank you very much. Thank you, buddy. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.